Hello and welcome to Tesseract Restoration Studios and today we're going to start another video on a small repair. Today we have a porcelain bird figurine. A small job, re relatively routine. It's a little more complicated than a couple of the other simple ones. But anyway, it involves uh, some airbrushing and some filling and stuff that you may not have seen before. So this is our next job. So on this job, I'm going to tape it together first and put the Hickstall on after. And the reason I'm doing that on this job is because often it has a lot of pieces and often when you're putting Hickstall on the cracks and then you wipe off the squeeze out now you have Hickstall all around it a very very thin coating but it prevents the tape from sticking so I don't want to get a better adhesion with the tape if I assemble it dry first. But the good alignment is key here. Once 
once it's taped together, I will put the Hickstall on. Essentially, you would get it stuck together enough that when I take the tape off, it Okay. I got pretty good alignment on all these joints, but there's a lot of chipping along these cracks, so there will be filling along them. But that's okay. It's part of the routine. sure I have enough tape on this so that it doesn't it, it's very light so I'm not too worried about it but if you put it in the hot box th things get the tape gets softer the glue gets a little softer it doesn't hold as well so if you have a lot of heavy parts or a lot of weight it can pull itself apart in the hot box so here's a look at what we have. All I have left are some tiny chips that go in. All right, so I've heated this up in my hot box at 150 degrees, eh, somewhere between 145 and 150 Fahrenheit. And now I have this fresh mixed Hickstall that I'm going to put on the cracks and let it wick in. I'm going between my tape and it'll run under the tape and run along the cracks. In some places it won't, but And tomorrow we take it off and put some more on. I had this in the hot box. I took out the um, before it fully cured. I took it out and I, I put in a few more pieces <clears throat> because it, it cured partially, so it was stiff enough and things weren't going to move around. While I wedged in some smaller chips in, in little pockets, like here, there's a flake there. A couple places along some of these cracks where I wedged in some uh, shards and then and then there was a hole here I put a piece in there and so uh, and I put it back in the hot box and then uh, today I came out and I took the tape off and now we're ready for the, um, the milliput level okay 
So I've got my Millipot mixed up and ready to go. So here we go. I'm going to start filling these crack lines. going to make you watch me do the whole thing, but you get the idea. I'll probably take a couple of rounds of this fill and file before we get it perfectly smooth. And here it is with all the milliput fills. It is the next day and I've got to file down this milliput fill that I did yesterday. So. Uh... Alright, so uh, we're ready to put some paint on this and since the last time, the last clip, uh, I have put two coats of cold glaze on this and sanded between each coat, which further smooths this, these seams here. So now what I need to do is put this background color on here and then cold glaze that. Again, and then we'll be able to put color on top of that.
see in here is the background color. I need to bring in this base color, otherwise when I spray this semi-translucent layers on top of that, uh, it, the color won't look right. So we need to have the right color underneath it. And also, this uh, the first coat of paint when I put it on sometimes doesn't, you don't see this when the cold glaze, but when I put color on it, as you've seen in some other videos I've done, uh, immediately rough spots where you need more fill will show up. So I have a, an area here and a little bit under here that need more fill. I'll address that. There's a couple other little minor spots here and there. And it's my last chance to catch that. So I will um, get a cold glaze on here to protect this layer that I just of paint that I just did. Then I'll fill these rough spots. Give it a little shot of the same color. And then we're ready to proceed with the... Uh, final pigmentation. Okay, um, so I have since filled the places that needed filled here, smoothed it out, and put another coat of this Titan Buff over top of it. And then, uh, and I just started, uh, I added a little uh, burnt umber to that and painted in some of this area underneath. And so I'm ready to put on some yellow, which we're going to do right here. It is the next day. And I have uh, sanded the area, only the area where I'm going to be painting on this. And we're going to do the next color, which is this orange on the breast. over the last thing I painted and now I just sanded this so I can paint the green and that's what we're doing next. Just to let you know that I wasn't airbrushing recklessly here, I have a, a frisket on here. Just masking off the orange.
finished bird. I put a, um, a semi-gloss, almost flat finish on it because the high gloss is not suitable for this type of thing. Thank you. 